So in the previous video, I've shown you how you can get started on using Google Colab for your data science projects. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can handle files on your Google Colab. So the benefit of Google Colab is that it can also read files from your Google Drive as well as being able to copy files from your Colab onto your Google Drive. Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chinin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get started. So the code that we're going to be using today is available from the GitHub of the data professor. So either you can download this directly by going to the code and going to Python and then click on the Colab file handling, right click on raw and then save link as. Okay, and then you save it into your computer. And so the next step is to open up your Google Colab and click on the GitHub and search for data professor. And then click on the Colab file handling on Google Colab and click on new notebook. And then click on the Colab file handling on Google Colab. But for those of you who have already downloaded onto your computer, you can click on upload and then you can choose file and then go to the directory where you have already saved the file and then upload that. Okay, so I have already pre-downloaded the file and I have also deleted all of the output that is already present on the GitHub. So the version that is shown on the GitHub is containing the output from each of the input command. But for this tutorial, I have already pre-deleted all of the output. And so we will be able to see it together in real time. Okay, so as previously mentioned, today we're covering about file handling on Google Colab. So the benefit of using Colab is that you are able to access Google Drive from within the Colab. And so you will be able to read, write, copy, move, and download files. So the first step, let's start with mounting your Google Drive into the Google Colab. So with this block of code, we're going to import the drive function from the Google Colab. And then we're going to mount the directory, which is content slash G drive. And then we're going to have the option force remount equals to true. So this option will allow us to remount the directory every time we run the code. Otherwise, it will give us an error. So why don't you go ahead and click on the run cell. And so clicking the run cell for the first time will initiate the cloud computing resource on Google. And so that might take you some time. And after it has successfully run the first cell, it will give you this message by telling you to go to this URL. So click on it. So after you click on your Gmail address, it will bring this page and then click on allow and then copy the code here and then paste the code and enter. And so this is the authorization code. And once it has successfully been mounted, it gives you the message mounted at content G drive. Okay, so the next step is to list the content of the directory and we're going to use the ls command. So this comes from the bash language. So when we want to invoke a bash command, we will use the exclamation mark in front, followed by the command from bash. So you can do a lot of things from the command line. And so here we list the contents of the current working directory. And so we see that there are two directories called G drive and sample data and sample data will contain some sample input files for you to play with in your data science projects. And so let's add the minus L option in order to get more detail of the files and directory. And so by using the minus L command, you are able to obtain other information such as the read, write, execute permission of the folders and files, as well as the file size and the date at which the file or folder was created. Okay, so let's say that you wanna create a directory in the Google Colab working directory. So what you can do is use the mkdir command. And so 
mkdir followed by the name of the directory that you want to create and then use the ls to have a look and then we see that the compiled data folder has been created as expected okay and so now let's create some files and we're able to create files using the bash command line by using the echo command followed by the text in the quotation mark and then we're going to use the greater than symbol followed by the name of the file which is data.txt so invoke that command so that will create a data.txt okay and the second way is to create the file directly from your python code so you can create a data2 variable where the content will use the open command and the argument will be the name of the text file that we want to create and it's going to be called data2.txt and then we're going to use the w option in order to tell it that we want to write the file and so on the next line we're going to call the data2 and then dot write function and so in parenthesis, we're going to put the text that we want to write into the file. And then finally, we're going to use the close command. Okay, and the third way to create a file is to download an existing file on the internet. So you can head over to the data professor GitHub and then download the weather Wika file. And so we can conveniently do this from within the command line by using the wget command. And so this will download the weatherweka.csv file. And so this tells us that it has successfully been downloaded. So let's list the contents of the file. So just a moment ago, we had created data.txt, data2.txt, and we have downloaded the, and then we have downloaded the weather-weka.csv. Okay. So let's head over now to the read files. So you can read the files directly in bash command line by using the cat command, okay? And so we're gonna use the exclamation mark followed by the cat command and then followed by the name of the text file. And so that will display the text that is coming from the data.txt. And then we're also gonna have a look at the data2.txt, which was created from Python. Okay, so both of them worked. So let's have a look at how we can read the files in Python. So firstly, we're going to define a variable called data, and then we're going to use the open command, and then followed by the name of the text file that we want to read in. And then for the argument, we're going to use the R, and so that means that it will read the file. So let's run the cell here. And then we're going to create a variable called data underscore content and the value will be data dot read command. And so what this does is it will assign the content of the data. It will read into this data content. And if we run this, we get the content of the file and notice that there is a backslash n. So we can simply delete that using the strip command. And so now we're going to access the Google Drive from the Google Colab. So let's list the content of the Colab Notebooks folder, which is found in our Google Drive. Okay, and so these are the files and folders that are within this Colab Notebook folder. So we should be aware that the contents of the Colab Working Directory will be deleted every time the session ends. And so it is crucial that we save the files that are in our working directory into the Google Drive so that we will be having the file saved for future usage. And so in the next couple of cells, I will be copying some files from the dataset folder, which is in the Google Drive. So if you want to reproduce this, go over to your Google Drive and then create a folder called dataset. And so the next thing that you want to do is go to the data professor GitHub and click on data and then go to the dhfr.csv and then right click on the raw link and then save link as and download the file into your computer. And notice that the file might be saved as dhfr.txt so you might have to rename it to be dhfr.csv and then you want to copy this into the dataset folder okay and now the dataset folder has the file so now let's list the contents of the dataset folder 
Okay, and so now we see that there is the dhfr.csv, the file that we have just copied into here. And so let's try to have a look whether we can change the directory into the dataset folder. And then we're going to print the working directory. So both of these are in bash command. Okay, and notice that it retrieves the output to be content. So it means that we were not able to go into the dataset folder. So apparently Google Drive did not allow us to change to this directory, the dataset. And so the purpose of changing to the dataset folder on the Google Drive is to go into that folder and copy the dhfr.csv into our Colab working directory. But apparently that didn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that in the following next couple of cells. But before we do that, let's list the contents of the current working directory again. And so notice that currently we don't yet have the dhfr.csv file. And so now we're going to copy the dhfr.csv file from the dataset folder of our Google Drive. And then we're going to put it into the current working directory. So the dot here represents the current working directory. So we're going to run that line of code. And then we're going to ls again. And now let's see if the dhfr.csv file is here. And it is here. Okay, so we have successfully copied the file from our Google Drive into the working directory of Colab. Okay, and what's the working directory of Colab? Let's do that by typing in PWD. Okay, and it says content. And you can even do the same by using Python. So you might need to have the OS package and then OS get CWD and then it will also say content. Okay, so that's the current working directory. Current working directory. Okay, so now we're going to copy files from the Google Colab onto your Google Drive. So this will come in handy when I previously explained to you that Whenever the session ends, the files that are in your Google Colab will be automatically removed. So you want to have a way that you could back up those files, particularly the files that might take a long time to run during your session in Google Colab. So what you want to do is you want to back up the files into your Google Drive. Okay, so let's list the contents of the dataset folder on Google Drive again. Okay, so the only file in here is the dhfr.csv. And so now we're going to copy the data.txt and data2.txt into this folder using the cp command. And then finally, we want to look at the content of the dataset folder. And so here we go. Before, we saw that there was only one file in here. And now we have already copied the data.txt and data2.txt files. So maybe you're wondering, what if I want to move files from and to Google Colab and Google Drive? How can you do that? Well, you could do that using the mv command. Okay, so before we move the files, let's distinguish between copying files and moving files. So in copying files, the file will be present in two locations, the original location and the destination location. But when we move the files, the file will be present in one location, which is the destination location. And so the original location, the file will be lost. Okay, it will be deleted because as the name implies, it is moved from one location to the other location. Okay, so let's do that. Let's have a look at the contents of the current working directory. Okay, and currently we have the weather weekacsv and we're going to move it into the dataset folder in the Google Drive. Okay, and let's have a look in the destination directory. Now the weather weekacsv is present in the destination directory. And what about the original directory? As we will see, okay, so weather weekacsv is deleted from the original directory. All right. So the file weather weekacsv is moved to the destination directory from the source directory. And therefore, the file no longer exists in the source directory.
And so we can have a look by using the ls command. And so the weather weka file is lost here. Okay, and another function of the mv command is not only to move files from one location to another location, but you can also use it to rename existing files. For example, you could use this mv and then the name of the original file and then followed by the name that you want to rename it as. Okay, so let's say that you want to rename dhfr.csv to become dhfr2.csv. And so when you do that, you get dhfr2.csv and the original file is lost. Okay, so it's kind of like moving the file to a new name. Okay, and the same concept applies to copying files. You could copy a file from one name and then you could create a copy that contains a different name. Okay, so instead of mv, you could replace it with cp, right? So cp dhfr.csv dhfr2.csv. So we will copy the dhfr file and rename it as a dhfr2.csv as a copy. Okay, so now let's have a look at deleting files. So deleting files is rather simple. You just use the rm command followed by the name of the file that you want to delete. Okay, so the file weatherweeka is not present because we had just moved it. So let's rename this to be dhfr2.csv. Shift enter. Okay, and then let's check the content again. And so we see that the dhfr2 file is deleted. It's not in here. So before we can delete the directory, let's create a directory that we can play with. So mkdir and then the name of the folder. Okay, and then we're gonna, okay, we don't need that. Okay, and so we're gonna download a data set from the GitHub of Data Professor. And after download, we will move it into the directory which we had created. And now let's look at the content of the directory. And now the directory contains a file. Okay, so let's try to delete the directory. RM, like we have previously used for removing the file. RM and then the file name. Let's see if that works on the directory. And so it says that it cannot remove TMP data because it is a directory. Okay, so in order to remove the directory, we're going to use the recursive function minus R. And so we will have to type in the command RM space minus R space and then the name of the directory. Okay, so that works. And then let's list the content again. Okay, there you have it. The TMP data directory is now lost. So we still have the compiled data, which is an empty directory. And so we could use the same command. So the directory can be empty or contain a file. We can still use the same command, rm minus r, in order to delete the directory. Okay, let's have a look again, list the content. And there you have it. The compiled data directory is now deleted. So I hope that this video was helpful for you to learn about how you can handle files and directories inside Google Colab and how you can make it work with your Google Drive. And so as always, if you want to learn data science, the best way is to do data science and build your data science portfolio. And you could do this by using new data. You could modify the notebook that we have here and use it on your favorite data set or a new data set that is of your interest and play around. Okay, so if there is a particular topic that you would like me to cover, please list it down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.